so yeah, I, I did I did spend some good time on this. I wanted to make sure that I was able to give you guys some diamonds and some gems to take home and and be able to use and utilize and implement within your social media. Uh, so we're gonna probably focus more on like the top five rather than every single social media channel. But like I said, there are some definite uh, gems in here that you guys can uh, implement right away. And also we'll go through some live um, social media accounts and things like that. So we can, you can get an idea what it actually looks like going through uh, the weeds and, and going into the back end of these social media systems and, and figuring out where to click and how to get things up and running rather than just looking at a, uh, a PowerPoint from me. So um, let me uh, get more people trying to get in. <clears throat> let me let them in and we can go ahead and get started. Let's see here. Okay, awesome. Can you guys... Oh. You cannot see my screen. There we go. Can you guys see my screen now? Yes. Perfect. And then I'm going to continuously look over here because I have my uh, attendance list over here. And so that way I can see if more people are joining. There are more people joining um, as I speak. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and apologize one more time in advance. My raspy voice, I woke up this morning with a little bit of a tickle in my throat, so you guys are going to have to bear with it. Uh, so sorry about that. Uh, but we can go ahead and jump right in. We are going to uh, learn uh, how your brand can win at social media today. We are uh, also looking going to be looking at some of the top primary social media platforms. So we're not going to get into the nitty gritty of all the 500 different platforms out there. However, I will give you a tool to go out there and see what makes sense for your business. Okay. Uh, so let's keep in mind that each one of our businesses is completely different. We have a different audience. We have a different uh, customer base and different messaging. So be able to, I, I tried to position this, uh, this webinar in a way that, you should be able to take this information and, and bring it directly into your business and, and excel on social media, okay? So um, as, you go as we go throughout the presentation, look for this little um, orange hexagon up there in the top right-hand corner, uh, because that is kind of my indirect way of saying, hey, this is a gem. You should take a screenshot. You should uh, write this down. You should remember it. You should take a picture. Uh, I'm sure a few of you got that reference, but... Um, that's uh, that's kind of your clear indicator that, hey, there's something valuable here that you can take with you and be able to uh, implement it within your social media strategies. OK, so cool. Um, let's go ahead and jump right in then. Uh, I always like to start with an agenda. I'm a super high blueprint uh, type of guy, so which means I need an outline. I need to be able to follow this type of structure. Okay. So uh, first things first, if you could just grab your mobile phone, check in for me. That way I can, you know have you go into our system as attending this webinar, you're, you're, you're uh, involved within the HOA.com network, you're here, you're learning, uh, you're helping your business grow. And that's really the first step is, is kind of getting on top of some of these educational based webinars to, um, to learn and, and, and really expand your business, especially with today being a social, uh, social media uh, presentation. So I don't want to scan. And it should be working just fine. Sure. It, it, it should pop up with a little yellow or green um, icon dot and you'll click on it and um, and then you'll be able to check in. Okay. Yeah, so. normally it works, but I'll keep trying. I took I took a what you call it of it. Yep. Uh -huh. Yep. Oh wait, and I got it. Never mind. I knew you could do it, gain it up. Awesome. Uh, also, if you guys could please mute throughout the presentation, if you have any background noise, I want to make sure. Uh, we're conscious of everybody's uh, time and they can hear me correctly, um, even though, once again, my voice. Uh, but uh, so we, we've got the check in today. We're going to go over top social channels, why you want to be on them, how you need to do business on them, when you need to post, what you need to post. And then also we're going to talk about cross posting, aggregators, uh, real time top platform dive. And then I actually have a social challenge for you guys at the end of the presentation so we can implement um, so you guys can take a lot of this information home with you and, and start making moves and getting more followers and ex expanding that brand exposure and uh, overall influence within your brand identity on social. Okay. Cool. So uh, before we actually <clears throat> get into the, the meat and potatoes, right, I, I created this top nine list because 
your business should have a listing on all of these different locations. Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, those are kind of the no-brainers. Google My Business. Google My Business originally had started as kind of a map listing based platform. It was called Google Places at one point in time. Um, but now you can actually push updates and things like that on Google My Business. Uh, and then six through nine is, is really the, some of those newer um, type of social media platforms within the TikTok to Snapchat. Pinterest is a little bit older as well as Twitter, um, but they, they still can provide value, but they're lower on the list because um, a few different reasons, and I'll tell you why in throughout this presentation, but I think really these top five, if you're not on anything social, you don't know how to do too much on social media, we're going to focus on these top five right here today. And if you want more deeper uh, guidance or consultation for all of these and all the other ones, we can absolutely schedule uh, some time with you and myself and anybody else within your business, your marketing team, that we can go over each individual piece of it and jump into the TikTok and the Snapchat and being able to uh, go through those. Um, awesome. Um, next, Noah. So this is a really great little tool. I didn't include the little hexagon for you, but it's called noam.com. You can basically go over to noam.com and you can determine and figure out if your brand handle is taken on majority in, in many social media channels. And I'm going to hold on for a second because I can hear somebody talking in the background. Then we have a few investors that could potentially. There you go. Got you taken care of. Uh, so that was um, noam.com. And it will literally allow you to search for your brand name and find the handle and look at hundreds, literally hundreds of social media websites that may be a great fit for your business. Okay. They, they touch on blogging. Uh, different industries uh, such as like um, social directories or anything like that. They have uh, education-based social sites. They have entertainment-based social websites, video sites. It's an awesome little tool. Go check it out, noam.com. Okay, but why do you guys need to be on these uh, social media platforms? Why social media? Well, A, everybody else is there, but number one is to because is because you need to create that social ripple and that one's in orange for a reason now if you see on the image on the right hand side <clears throat> that's kind of my reference to jurassic park one when the dinosaur steps on the ground and you can kind of see uh the different um you can see the the amount of impact that that dinosaur foot has and how it kind of starts in the middle and then brings it branches off to the outside that's that social ripple so every time i think of social media i kind of picture this little glass because if you start by putting one thing and then you tag one person and so you have your network and then you have all of their network it's going to continue to expand that's your social ripple it can increase tremendously by one amazing post that you do and we'll talk about the different types of posts we can do here in the future here in the next couple of slides as well uh, but why, again, to, to create a brand identity, you know, um, your website is part of your brand identity, but the messaging that you put out on social, the images, the graphics, the videos that you share on social, that is all part of your brand identity. So having a clear and concise direction of who you are as a company can absolutely filter throughout those social channels and hit that social ripple and have everybody within your overall sphere learn about who you are and who your business is, how you work, and um, what type of products and services you offer, okay? Uh, so that kind of touches on that number three, the brand awareness and exposure. Uh, you can also engage with your customers on these platforms, which is awesome. Um, and then really you can attract new customers and some of those customers might end up being these influencers, the industry influencers and brand ambassadors. Uh, so if you can get influencers and ambassadors on your side, they're going to promote you to the end of the world and everybody's going to love you because they all love those influencers. Okay. Um, on social media, you can also learn what your customers want based upon what you publish, right? So if, if you publish something that you think is amazing, but it gets absolutely no engagement, that's cool that you like it, but you have to let the data tell the story a little bit. And we'll talk about the data here today um, because if the customers respond to it, that means something you're else you're doing is working and it's very clear that it's working because you've gotten a lot of engagement. Okay. 
Uh, you can, again, that leads into number seven, learn what generates buzz and responses from your customers. It encourages um, more earned media with, with shares, recommendations, kind of touched on that again already. Um, it allows your business to become the go-to business for your industry. You know, if you're a realtor in the greater Phoenix area, you know, the more you post and build your own personal brand, people are going to say, oh, that realtor in Phoenix, I know them. Uh, and that's kind of that ripple, right? It's going to resonate with individuals that are, um, you know, seeing your brand. If you're not active on social, they're not going to see your brand because that's where a lot of companies, a lot of businesses, and a lot of individuals uh, who buy your products are. They're on social media. And then also it makes uh, the customer journey and communication very smooth and simple. Okay. Now I add, um, I added this little piece on there because a lot of these social media channels don't have to be uh, managed from your phone. Uh, I do a lot of my social media, media management on my desktop. Like you can literally go there on a desktop and we're going to do it today on some of the HOA.com channels. So you can see that it's easier to navigate when you have it on a desktop rather than finding uh, different things on a mobile device that are hidden behind hamburger menus or specific drop downs. Okay, so manage your social on desktop. That's probably my biggest piece here, uh, be besides the ripple and being able to get your brand in front of more people. Okay, manage your social on desktop. Uh, but you're asking how at this point, right? So, my best tip for you, and there's the hexagon, is to create a social calendar. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to look like with the image on the right, it, it can be whatever makes sense to you. Okay. Um, I'm going to pull up a video here in a second of a social calendar of, of me just kind of creating one. It took me a minute and a half and I'll show you that here in a second. Um, but you can theme your different days and it creates a follower cadence. So you see the image on the right hand side. Yes, there's a new thing every single day of the month. But if you do motivational Mondays or Wednesday wisdom, or throwback Thursdays, your follower Fridays, testimonial Tuesdays can be awesome because you're literally creating engagement with that user generated content and showing other individuals on your social who follow you that there are other real people out there that like and love your business. Okay. And then you're sitting there thinking, so I know some of you over there are like, social media is just not my jam. I'm just not a fan. I can't get behind it. I can't get into it. Well, you have to because that's where a lot of your customers are. And it doesn't have to be hard. It can be fun. It really can be. Uh, you just have to shift your mindset a little bit. And then I added this little piece on there. It's a 10 for one. Okay. So that's on the top right hand side. That's a 10 for one. So if you do 15 posts a week, 10 of those should be informational based. Four of those should be company based. And one of those should actually be something that you're selling, like a product page or a product uh, buy this now. OK, so uh, if you're interested in a different cadence on how many times and when you should post and things like that, I, I strongly suggest you look at the 1041, create a hybrid that makes sense for you and your business. And instead of just blasting out every single day, buy my products, buy my products, buy my products. It's here's industry news. Here's uh, updates from the company. Here is a new product. Sure. Uh, but look at that 1041. OK. Um, also, awesome. So now you're thinking, okay, I, I've learned a little bit. I know how to, we, we're going to get a social calendar. Okay, great. Um, so Hootsuite, which is a, a social media aggregator. And again, we'll talk about that here in a second. They did a case study with over 30,000 social media posts. And the best times to post is what's on the screen here that you're looking at. Okay. So you have the best time for Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn. And what that really looks like is that. OK, and I just created this um, the other day real quick, took me a minute and a half. Um, and, and really, that's kind of what this 30,000 person case study showed. But it also said that the best time overall is 10 a.m. during the week. OK, so Monday through Friday, 10 a.m., uh, put all your information out on your channels based upon and, and driven from your social calendar. So let's take a quick look at that. And I got somebody in the waiting room. So let's take a quick look at that. I'm going to play this video. There is no sound. You shouldn't be able to hear it. This is me, I think yesterday or the day before, and literally taking a minute and a half. You can see that it's a minute 25, minute 30. And I'm just creating this overall template for a social calendar. It's in Microsoft Excel. Okay. 
Um, now, because I'm super high blueprint and, and a stickler and, and probably a little bit OCD, I have to have my, my, my cells formatted properly and colored on brand. It's always good to color um, all of your sheets and all of your, your, um, your Word docs and things like that and have them on brand, right? So this is the HOA.com brand. I use my hex codes. I just don't say, give me a random orange. Uh, but as you can see on this video, and it's just taking a minute and a half, um, okay, well, here's my month. Here's my days of the week. Here's my social platforms that I currently have. And I'm going to, once again, go a little bit more with formatting, but um, I'm going to create this monthly cadence and this calendar of what I'm posting and when. Okay, uh, so I'll speed it up a little bit. That's pretty much what it looks like. I just copy pasted it a couple of times to figure out the two, three, four or five weeks of the month. And then you can start to add your information in there. This is a super basic way to create a calendar. This is, doesn't cost you any money. Um, you're not you're not buying into a platform where you have to you know schedule or, or do anything like that. Uh, although scheduling can be great and it can be beneficial. And so uh, now what to post, right? I know I just uh, went over that fairly quickly, but uh, I want to make sure we can get get through all this. Now I know there's a lot of information here. There's a ton. All right, I I, I stuck with fifty. I could have went to two hundred. There's a ton of stuff to post here. And I have that little hexagon up there for you. You can totally take a screenshot. You can start to get some ideas out of this. You could do a Google search for what should I post on social media. And there's going to be hundreds of articles that say, do this and do this and do this and do this. Um, so this is just a list of the top 50. You know, some of these you can pull out. Go behind the scenes. Number one. All right. Take your customers behind the scenes of your business. Right. Um, number number seven, ask a question or number eight, do a poll. You know, that creates real engagement with your followers. A giveaway. Uh, giveaways can be great, too. It doesn't have to be anything great. It could be a fifteen dollar Amazon gift card or Starbucks gift card. OK, any of these can work. Any of these you want to complement with images and videos and something to drive engagement. OK. And then you're sitting there going, I don't have time for that. No one does. I don't. I know I don't. It's okay. But you can also use a post scheduler. It should be able to cross post. Okay. So every, all these images, the image that you see on the right with all these uh, different sites, these are all websites out there that allow you to load in your social media platforms and networks and handles and channels and push go after you schedule the post and it'll send it out to all your different social media channels at one time. The benefits here are that, um, you know, it's the same message across the board all time. Uh, so you're, you're communicating to all of your audience one clean and clear message throughout the day. Now, you can do these multiple times a day. And we'll, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit as well. Excuse me. Um, so if you want to pay for a service, these are some of the services you could do. Okay. If you don't want to pay for an actual service that you can uh, push your information through and you really just want that social media engagement. You don't really have too much insight into what goes out, but you do care a little bit. You know, there's there, there's different levels of um, how involved you can and, and should be with this. Obviously, you should be 100 percent involved with what is being put out there on behalf of your brand, but you can also outsource these social posts or hire a social media manager. There's a ton of them out there. You can go to um, LinkedIn jobs, you, which is also free. You can put, you can look at um, Indeed. Indeed is a great place that has a lot of people that know how to do social media. And then the off-peak act activity. So this is really cool. And I wanted to include this one um, because on a, some of these platforms, you can click play on a story. And you can move it over to a different window within your desktop and you can just let it play and it'll just continue playing. So it'll show that those other people that you are following, that you're viewing their stories and they're viewing their content, which is going to show them that you're viewing it. So they're going to have you in their mind for, oh, that company viewed my stuff. That's great. Um, stoplight scrolling. So um, I do this sometimes, please don't get an accident if you do this, but some of our lights here in Phoenix are like three and a half minutes. So I'm like sitting there scrolling on my phone. Don't be one of those people with me behind you that has to honk at you or anything. And then um, the last one can get messy if you're not good at it. 
uh, toilet time, so be careful with that one. I'll just leave it there. Uh, cool. But within your social media posts, don't forget to um, to post pictures, videos, use hashtags, and at mention people. Okay. Uh, do live updates. You can see an image on the right hand side. Uh, this is a post we put out a couple of weeks ago. Hey, mortgage pros, and we dropped a, a call to action link as well as a referral code on top of it. And then we used our hashtags there. So this one, we didn't necessarily have to tag anybody, but we absolutely wanted to make sure that we use some of these top hashtags. Okay. All right, cool. So I'm done talking for a minute on just making sure, make, having you guys look at the PowerPoint. Um, I'm gonna jump into some of our, our social channels and really show you the behind the scenes. And I think that this might be one of the most beneficial parts for you guys who are just starting to branch off into your social media channels. And then that way we can, uh, you can get an idea of where to click and where to go and how to, how to do some of these items and some of these um, different posts. So that way, I wanna make sure this works here, hold on. Cool, can you guys still, can you guys see my, the, the Facebook thing that just popped up or are you still seeing the, the slide deck? Allie? We can see the Facebook. Yep, awesome, thank Facebook. you, Ashley. Okay, so here guys, we're gonna start with these top five. We're gonna go Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, uh, Google My Business, LinkedIn, Twitter, and then I have an extra little bonus for you at the end. Uh, but so you go to your Facebook, right? Type in the URL, facebook.com. Here's your dashboard. You can tell that it's your business profile because it's your business name up here on the left and the right hand side and not necessarily just your personal picture. OK, um, so the first thing I want to make sure I direct you to is this professional dashboard. This professional dashboard can give you a ton of information. The information that it gives you is how many posts you're doing, how many followers you have over the last 28 days, what's your engagement, how many new people like your business over the last 30 days, 28, 30 days. So uh, you, you can see here that there's a ton of information. So if you're not familiar with a professional dashboard, I absolutely say, make sure you get in there and you become familiar. You can come up here and you can say, what, what is my top post over the last 28 days? Oh, okay, well, this is a post that reached almost a thousand people. So I wanna make sure that I do that again and schedule that thing on a weekly basis to get more people in front of your brand or your brand in front of more people. You can look at all the different recent posts. There's actually a, a new pages guide. So if you ha have a Facebook page, you're still new to it, you're still learning, jump in your professional dashboard, click on learn how to switch and learn more about what, you can do with new pages is literally a new page guide. Okay. So um, that's kind of the first piece of it. The second piece, and I talked a little bit about schedulers. So we're going to talk a little bit about them more uh, right now as well. I want to make sure I deliver what I'm going to be able to say. So here is the meta business suite. This does not cost money. All right. This is just within your Facebook dashboard. If you come in here, you can create ads from here. You don't have to do ads. That's not what I'm saying. But you can come in here and, again, the insights and the knowledge of what is being put out there and what can be put out there. So the part that I want to focus on here is this planner, right? So you click on this planner, and we right now have posts scheduled every single day of the week. So you can come in here and you can see your planner and you can create a post and you can schedule this post. So if what makes sense to your business is to go in there for an hour on Sunday and schedule your posts out for the next week so you don't have to get on social, you could do that, all right? But part of social media is the engagement. You wanna make sure if people are commenting on your, on your posts that you respond to them as a business so they know you're there and you're supporting them and, and you're behind them in, in, in every way that they might want or need, okay? Uh, so that's that planner section. Um, again, if you're, if you're really new with managing social or anything like that, you don't have the, the funds or the time to hire somebody or to do it yourself, um, this is an easy way to come in here. And I, I strongly suggest you poke around. You know, what does audience mean? Oh, I bet you that's the people that are viewing my brand. What, how many posts do I have? You know, should I look at running ads? Can I accept appointments? Do I want to create a brand new event? 
who has access to my page? That's a good one. That's a smart one to know. If you have a business partner, you want to make sure that everybody has access to the page and you guys can double, uh, double time or tag team on that page and get more information out there about the brand. So absolutely go to your professional dashboard and learn and click and educate yourself in the best way possible to really excel um, on Facebook specifically. All right. Uh, and then the last thing I'm going to do before I jump out of Facebook is make sure that you click on your settings and go through every single piece of your settings. Like I know it sounds boring, but it, it, it's something that you need to do. So you're aware of what everything is capable within every single platform. Now I could have taken this uh, presentation and just made it all about Facebook and we could go super, super deep within Facebook and I could show you every in and out, but I wanted to make sure we got a little bit wider as well. So um, this is just kind of my, Jump in to the back end of Facebook, look at your professional dashboard and, and educate yourself and really begin to learn what's capable within Facebook posting on um, for your business. OK, um, and then before I jump actually out of Facebook, I want to talk a little bit about groups. Groups can be super uh, helpful and beneficial. All right. So get into some relevant groups. It should be relevant. They should be local. And they should probably have more than about 50 people in it, right? If you can jump into a group with a couple thousand and then post in that group, which is going to be reflective on your social media calendar, um, you know, all those 3,000, 10,000 people in that group have the opportunity to see your brand, see your products and interact with you within that post that you're putting up there, all right? So groups can be super powerful. Definitely make sure you get into some groups. And then also as a brand, you can see that, um, you know, we here at HOA.com work with all sorts of professionals that serve homeowners. So if you're looking at these stories, these Facebook stories, um, you know, here's an, all, an insurance agent and here's uh, Jake Mullen with Roofs Only. And here's another real estate agent. And this is Keller Williams. And then we have Phoenix Business Radio. So this is an opportunity to reach out and collab. Right. So we can watch this story. We can like the story. We can comment. We can do all this. And this actually sends them a notification that you have liked or loved their their story. And it hits their inbox. That opens up a ton of opportunities for saying, hey, uh, maybe we can we can get on your radio station or, hey, you're a real estate agent. May, maybe you want to work together in the future. It, the, the, it's the ripple. It's a social ripple. One thing can really start to expand your business in a tremendous ways. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to jump into YouTube next. Um, this is the Homeowner Alliance, HOA.com YouTube channel. Uh, once again, first thing off the bat, I'm going to say become familiarized with the settings. So you can always tell it's your business profile when your logo is up here and it's not your face. But I would say always, number one, go into the settings and see what's capable and see what's public and see what's not public. You want to make sure that you're, you're displaying information that you actually want to display and that people can't see things that you don't necessarily want to be public. Within YouTube, that customized channel, it, it, it literally tells you, customize your channel. Well, if you go to the, your channel, you could put a hero graphic, you could put a banner graphic, you can have multiple images. Uh, and then also, this is my gem for YouTube, my number one gem that you can do right now today, youtube.com slash handle. Okay. Um, this is uh, the URL structure for your YouTube profile. So if you are, um, I know I have Shalara and Karina here. So if you are Green Hab Living, and you guys do real estate and solar down in San Antonio, right? Um, you would come here, go to handle, and you would secure Green Hab Living or whatever you would want it to be for your business. As far as those handles go, you want to keep them as consistent as possible, especially within social media. We'll make sure that you have one consistent brand identity across all of these channels. All right. Um, so that make sure you go to uh, youtube.com slash handle. Optimize your channel. Make sure you're showing everything you want to show. You can see I have the uh, the banner graphic here. You have different videos and playlists right here. You can go in the left hand side as well. Add playlists. Add videos to your playlist. You can see if I click on playlist for the homeowner alliance, I have um, 
all different types of, of playlists that we have here, Business Alliance Leaders, Premier Pro Spotlights. Um, so I can view all these playlists. People can subscribe to your channel and also watch your videos and through your playlists. That's one of the things I really haven't touched too much on is if you follow them, they'll come. Kind of like the Field of Dreams, if you build it, they'll come. But if you follow people that are relevant in your industry and that are local within your local space that you do business, they're going to follow you back. It's probably about 50% of them. So if you follow 10, you'll probably get five follows back, but that increases your follower base. And so as you go out there and you publish new updates, there are five more people are going to see it. The next day you follow 10, five more people follow you back. Now 10 people are going to see that second day post, right? So constantly be um, on your social media channels, following, subscribing, and doing some type of engagement for or, or updates for, for increased engagement. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to jump into, um, I'm going to jump into Instagram. So Instagram is really cool because obviously you can post a lot of graphics. You can tag people. The hashtags can go crazy. This is the HOA.com Instagram uh, page. So you can see, you know, we have followers and things like that. But as you go out there and you can kind of theme, well, we work with pros. So we want to push information out about our pros and promote them. So you can see that on this page, we haven't really said, hey, come buy our product. We're saying, hey, we're doing it. We've been boot camping for community impact. We're supporting veterans in the Veteran Business Alliance. Hey, come out to our Arvada Business Alliance. So it's not come buy our stuff, come buy our stuff. It is, here's what we're doing. We'd like you to be a part of it, right? So it's more of that becoming a charity champion, a community champion, um, and, and showcasing that and gaining those follows, followers organically. So as you come into Instagram, they change the uh, layout a little bit. Again, I'm going to say it. I'll probably say it for every single one. Make sure you go into your settings and, and you have completely, uh, oh, I have someone in the waiting room. You've completely optimized your profile. If there's five text fields, fill out all, all five of those. If it allows for a tagline, add your tagline. Don't leave it blank. Optimize your profile, okay? Uh, also, with an Instagram, the search functionality can be huge. That's my sister-in-law. Um, the search functionality can be huge. Let's say you're a roofer in San Antonio like Jake Mullen, and he wants to connect with a home inspector. Home inspector uh, Austin. Do a quick search. Look at all these people that are potentially home inspectors in Austin. So I'm going to come here and let's just say, you know, I, I would love to work with this guy. HOA.com would love to work with this guy. So we're going to follow him. We're going to see if he follows back. Now, here's where it starts to get fun because it said, hey, you follow this guy. Here's some other local Austin based businesses that you might also like. Okay. Cool. Cross-country mortgage. We work with mortgage companies. All right, I'm going to follow them. Let's keep going. Um, let's see here. Um, you know, we can click on each individual one of these people. Uh, Vanessa. Vanessa is in real estate. She's a fitness junkie, an ex-Marine. We are a, a veteran-owned business. I love that. I'm going to connect with Vanessa. Awesome. Okay, well, there's more people. We can absolutely go and follow more people. And then if you do this 10 times a day, let's say 50% following back, after a week, you're going to have another, uh, what is that, 25 followers. That's 25 more people that see your posts and see your updates, okay? I think it's, it's pretty clean and clear as far as you follow people, they're going to follow you back, that kind of stuff. But really doing those posts and that type of engagement can, can really allow you to sell on social. And we haven't even really talked about the selling on social. So as somebody comes in and they follow you back, this is your opportunity to say, hey, uh, Jordan, the Florida broker, she started following me three days ago, the HOA.com account. I can re reach out to Jordan and say, hey, thanks for the follow. No, we went ahead and followed you back. I see your uh, uh, real estate broker in Florida. We actually have this product specifically geared towards uh, real estate agents and or mortgage lenders. Would you be interested in this? We're having a webinar next Wednesday love for you to attend, right? Again, not specifically selling, hey, come buy my product. Hey, come, come be a customer. But hey, come learn, come educate yourself. We're doing this. How's everything else going, right? And so that's kind of where you can start to build that brand identity, even through direct messaging 
through these platforms. Cool. Uh, I know I I'm, I'm, I'm talking a lot, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, looking at Google My Business. Okay, so if you guys want to rank in map packs or if you were able to see my or, or view my previous um, webinars, my meetings, the Google My Business um, profile for your business, it's crucial. Okay, if you want to show up in map packs, I would suggest go to Google, just like you see here. Literally search Google My Business. It'll give you, it'll give you, um, let's just go ahead and do it real time, right? I'm not going to, uh, I'm just going to do it real time. And here's, here's my Google My Business profile. All right, cool. Let's, let's sign in. Let's manage now. Now, I manage a few other ones, but as far as the HOA.com one goes, this is how your business shows up in Google. All right, cool. So I can edit my profile and read reviews and ask for reviews. I can run ads. I want to let Google know that we're open on Thanksgiving. Uh, we run a couple different things on the back end of the website. One of them is, is WooCommerce. So we can literally have our products show on Google by connecting them to WooCommerce with Google. And then this is kind of how you manage that overall um, Google My Business profile. Okay. <clears throat> As you come up here, you can say add photo. That's a way you can essentially do a, a post or an update on Google. I can add a photo right now to everybody who follows me on Google. That's great because it's going to show up here as well. All right. Um, awesome. Let's keep moving forward. Um, LinkedIn. All right. So as a business owner or, or a primary individual that runs a business, all right, you should absolutely have a LinkedIn profile. But on top of the profile, you should have a business profile. So yes, Spencer Hesseltine, myself, I have a profile. You can see me up here in the right-hand side. But this is the actual company for HOA.com. So if your business does not have a LinkedIn company page, now's the time to create one. Okay, You can do a, a, a lot of information, on, uh, post out a lot of information on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a professional social network. If you're looking to connect with other professionals, and maybe that's your, your business strategy or, or who you're trying to connect with, this is a great place for you. If you're looking to hire more people in the future, this is another great place for you. It's basically kind of a scorecard, uh, a social scorecard for your business. And then also within uh, LinkedIn, there it tells you how many new unique visitors and how many new followers you have and how many impressions that your posts have. Just like any social network, you can post all of your information, all of your updates, all everything from your calendar that we talked about earlier, right here on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, so you can see we have different events. You can host events in here. You can look at all the different hashtags that are being used. There's a ton of opportunity with social. Absolutely make sure your business has a company profile on LinkedIn. Okay. Cool. Uh, awesome. Moving into Twitter. Um, just to be transparent, I'm all about honesty and transparency. I'm not the biggest fan of Twitter. Elon Musk is cool, but not that cool. All right. Um, at least in my eyes. So definitely have a Twitter for your business. There's a ton of ways you can go into the left hand navigation, just like majority of all these other social networks and really educate yourself on what you need to do and how you need to to put information out. Twitter still has a, a character limit on their their tweets and their updates that you can you can give out there, but you can search by different hashtags. What's what's for us for a business? World Cup. Okay, cool. What's trending? That's awesome. If you know that something is is trending, you guys can inject your business and your brand within the conversation by using that hashtag. That's what hashtags are for. To be able to say hashtag Thanksgiving. Hashtag Giving Tuesday. Then you can get right in the middle of those 7,000 tweets or those 29,000 tweets. Inject your business right then and there. Okay. Uh, that works through all of these networks, not just Twitter. All right. One of the pieces that I haven't really touched on with all these social media channels is majority of them have a website field. So which what that means is they allow for you to say, hey, my website is HOA.com. When Google sees your profiles, Google's going to give you another vote of confidence of knowing what the heck you're doing with your brand because all these other social media channels are linking to you. It's creating a more of a diverse link profile. 
So you have your social accounts, you have your listings, you have your friends, you have your buddies, you have your HOA.com profile, you know, everything like that, that is linking to your website. Google saying, oh, all these people like this brand. I'm going to like them more too. And I'm going to rank them higher in search. So social media doesn't necessarily rank well for Google, but it can provide those social signals, allowing Google and search engines to rank your website higher because you have these presence, you have a presence on these social sites. Okay, we're getting close to time. I'm gonna give you my last little gem, jump back into the presentation here in a second. Uh, my last little gem right here, guys, is Quora. Quora is awesome and it ranks really well in Google, okay? What Quora is, is it's a QA site. It's simply a question answer site. Now, you cannot have a Quora profile for your business. They don't allow it. But your primary marketing representative or PR person or media person can, or even CEO, you can create a profile for yourself. <coughs> and what this QA does is it allows you to come in here and see what people are asking. People have a thousand questions every day. Of course, when I'm checking it, there's no, no notifications. Uh, but this is under my individual profile, but you can start to come in here and people are asking about Huskies. Okay, here, marketing and content. 401,000 followers. Okay, so we could type in anything. You want to type in mortgage. I'm just doing a quick search for mortgage. We have all these individuals asking questions and there is the opportunity for you to answer that question, answer the question, be shown as an authority in your industry, drop a link to your asset, your resource, your mortgage calculator, or whatever you are able to provide as far as what you're giving to your audience. And uh, like I said, inject yourself right into that conversation immediately. There's a ton of individuals searching and having questions and making posts and creating profiles. And if you're not here, you can't be found. And if you're not active, you're still not going to be found. So I would say absolutely have these top five, maybe even this Quora one as well. Get active, have a social media calendar, post frequently, interact with your audience and your brand ripple, your social ripple will continue to expand. Okay. So I'm going to jump out of that. And uh, we talked a little bit about Facebook already. Uh, I did want to drop this quick stat on you. Um, social media strategist uh, Jeff Bolas, he did a couple different um, case studies and, and tests. If you don't include an average or a photo within your posts, the engagement is going to be decreased by 37%. So by just by adding a photo onto your social media post, it's going to increase the engagement by 37%. That's something to take home with you. Don't just put out a quick little message. Add a photo, add a video, add something compelling. It's going to increase 37%. And then also, um, BuzzSumo did another, um, excuse me, did another um, study. And again, photos within uh, social media posts get 2.3 times uh, more engagement. So if you could get in front of 10 people, wouldn't you rather 23 people see that? I'm not sure if I did the math right. One second, please. Awesome. Uh, we talked a little bit about YouTube. I want to reiterate, optimize your videos, create uh, playlists, claim your handle. We talked about the youtube.com slash handle. Um, number four, super awesome, super huge. Upload your videos to YouTube and then put them on social. Don't just upload your videos from your phone or your computer directly into Facebook or directly into uh, Instagram or Twitter. Put them on YouTube first. That way the, the video lives somewhere else online rather than inside of Facebook's code. You can post that video then on your website. You can send a link to uh, anybody who asks for, hey, where was that video? Instead of having to try and scroll through months or weeks of Facebook posts to try and find this update that you did with this video. Put it on YouTube, then share it. And then we talked a little bit about playlists. I had no, I had it number two but uh, different types of videos, products, testimonials, market research. Maybe you could just like do an ask the expert. I don't know. I've never heard about that before. Just kidding. You're on one right now. Um, and, then, and then like I mentioned, number six, include and embed those on your website. 
Um, so Instagram, we talked a little bit about this. I just had a slides to back it up. Um, you can see here that I'm, I, I was getting ready to do a post about the uh, mortgage expert webinar we're going to have on December 7th. I just started the, uh, the, the post on the right hand side and I just did hashtag business. All right. 99 million posts around hashtag business. You can go on Instagram, you can search hashtag business and look at who, el who else is out there talking about business. Well, that's pretty broad, but depending on your industry and where you're at, you know, if you do, a, if you're a solar company, you could do hashtag solar or hashtag save money or hashtag in it, cut energy costs. You can figure out what those are and what those look like and what those top hashtags are. And I did that here. I just did a Google search, guys. Most popular hashtags. All right. Love, Insta good, fashion, photo of the day. You could start doing a photo of the day every single day for your business and really be have the opportunity to get in front of that 797 million individuals that follow that trend. All right. Uh, cool. We talked a little bit about stories, watching their stories. You know, if you if you comment, if you like their stories, it goes right into their inbox, guys. That's a perfect way to generate new business. OK, so here's my challenge. I know I'm running low on time, so I want to make sure we have time for questions. If there are any, my challenge for you is to get active. OK, so test your social media and measure. Let's just keep it to Facebook and Instagram. So day one, that's today. This is this is my challenge to you today. Go over to your Facebook channel or your social channels, Facebook and Instagram, and, and, and gather how many people follow your business. All right. And over the next week, each day or week, depending on how much time you have, follow 50 people and then capture how many of those 50 followed you back. So we're going to test this, guys. So if you follow 50 people and 50% of them follow you back, you get 25 new at the end of the week, or if you're doing it by day, uh, you could be looking at 125 new per five business days. And then, like I said, capture how many of them follow you back and then be able to next week start watching their stories and see what how active they are and become active with them and engage with them, like and comment and slide into their DMs from a business aspect. Week three is connect with them. You know, that's, that's where you've, you've liked their post, you've commented, you put a little smiley, happy face on, on their, their stories. And uh, they said, oh, I love that. And put a little heart around your, your message. That's your opportunity to really jump into week three, week four, what you have on the screen is to connect with them with a template. Hey, thanks person name. Thanks for the follow. I wanted to reach out and introduce myself. I'm this amazing person with this amazing company. And we do X, Y, Z in, in, uh, in, in San Antonio. I would love to connect with you and see how we can share business referrals. Now, that would be something that I would say because HOA.com is in the business of the raving referral. But you could send whatever message you want. And then, like I mentioned in, in one of the posts earlier, you can have that call to action. Drop a link. Uh, promote promote a link to them. Say, hey, we're having an event next week. I'd love for you to come out. Here's a link to register. And then that week four. So this is four weeks from today. Uh, socially sell. You know, so you can do this via messaging and hashtags. You can promote your upcoming events. You can uh, offer a free quote depending on what your business is. All right. Um, so there's huge opportunities for really engaging with these people from your brand to expand your overall brand identity, exposure, influence over other businesses and consumers. So that's my challenge for you guys. So I'd love you to come back four weeks from today. Send me an email, spencer at hoa.com. You can also include any questions or concerns you might have in there. If you want, want some guidance on keywords or SEO or anything like that, drop it in there too. But that's my challenge for you today. Spend one month following this outline. And at the end of the month, the, the primary goal here is how many more followers do you have and how many more sales did you make? But you got to follow it. Cool, guys. My next, uh, my next net digital marketing event is on December 20th. We're going to be talking about video marketing. So uh, please head over to 
hoa.com slash webinar hyphen register and register for that upcoming event. Uh, that is the end of my presentation. So I will go ahead and open it up uh, for questions that anybody may have. Oh, was it that boring? Come on, guys. What questions do you have? I'm sure there's a few. I don't get the whole hashtag thing. Like, what exactly does that necessarily do? Yeah, so so really, really good question and, and comment and concern, right? Because um, the hashtag is, is it can be a, a variety of different things. One is obviously, um, you know, a lot of people try to use it to try and become relevant. Um, a lot of people use it when it's trending or something's happening in the world. If you're if you're a you're a loan officer, right? So you could say um, hashtag swimming pool, like, hey, I'm going to be going swimming in this home that I'm about to buy or I'm about to sell or whatever the case is. Um, it, it's a it's a way to generate buzz around a specific vertical within an industry or something that may be trending. It's just it's just another way to call out a specific um item within a post do you get more like i guess people looking at at it if you do more hashtags yeah absolutely so so if you go into any one of those social media channels right you can do a search for hashtag um computer you know i was i was just looking at your monitors right so you can do a hashtag um uh new home and there are people out there that are saying the same thing, but there's also people out there that are searching for that thing. So when you start to think about hashtags for your business, really think about what your consumers are searching for or interested in. So you can use that hashtag. So as they go out there and they do searches and they're trying to find other you know, things that are relevant to them, you have the opportunity to show up because you're already talking their language and using the hashtags that they may be wanting to see. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Anything else, guys? What do we got? We got about four minutes left. If we don't have anything, I'll go ahead and get you guys off the line. I know I've been talking for an hour straight. Hopefully you guys learned something, um, but last chance for any other questions. Um, we were asking how often should we go live and for how long? Like, what's a good time frame for going live? Very good question, right? So, I mean, I would say go. you can absolutely go live at least once a week. I wouldn't do it every single day. People are going to get bored of it. Oh, they're going live again. All right, I'm just going to scroll past it, you know. Um, but but if you create that, that cadence of... Um, Monday, Monday, go live or, or um, hump day or something like that. You can absolutely, I would say, do it once a week. And how long it should be is uh, probably no more than an hour, um, depending on what type of, of thing you're doing. Like, let's just say, uh, Karina, you were interviewing Shalara about uh, how much money you can save with solar panels. You know, let's say let's say Shalara was a customer or was a manufacturer or something like that. You know, there's no reason to be on that call for an hour. It could be going live for 10, 15, 30 minutes. Um, you know, but if it's over an hour, people are people don't have time like that. You know, as far as what people watch, as far as like videos, um, their attention span is, is very, very short. Um, the I, I don't remember the statistic, but the average person watches about 27 seconds of a video when they get on youtube right or something like that don't quote me but um you know attention spans are short so the longer it is the the less um less attention you're going to have that's probably why i got no questions because i sat here and talked for an hour just kidding um i'll see i got a couple smiles great great i love to see it uh cool does that answer your question uh karina perfect Awesome. Well, we got about two minutes left. If there's not any other questions, I'll go ahead and uh, close it out. Thank I did you. see one in the chat, Spencer, from uh... Andrew. Yep. Andrew um, asks on Instagram, what is the ratio of business to personal posts that should be made? So that's a really good question. I'm glad you brought that up because I think I missed it when I was talking about uh, the Instagram part of it. Um, what I would suggest is that you have a personal Instagram and you also have a business Instagram profile. Okay. So 
within the um, within the settings, when you click on settings and you go into edit profile, you can actually switch between a personal and a professional Instagram uh, account. I would say, um, let me go back to the question. So what's the ratio or, or, or cadence as far as business versus personal? Um, you could, I would do Instagram personal posts. I personally do them like once a day. Um, you know, as a brand, you, I think you could do up to like six to 10. Um, the, the, the 10 for one hybrid basically says you should post four times a day. So, um, if you have that much content that you can push out there, I would say do, do four times a day, eight, 10, two, four, or, or something like that. That makes sense for your business. Um, and, uh, and get out there as much as you can and follow more people and, and keep those posts going because the more posts you have, the more people can see it and the more people learn about your business. Um, so to directly answer the question, I would post separately. I wouldn't combine them. Some, some businesses like brokers, uh, like Gaynetta over there, um, she may have just one. She may just brand herself as in Gaynetta. I think you're in, um, is it North Carolina? New Jersey. New Jersey. So she could brand herself as the New Jersey broker. And so it would be a mix of personal versus uh, brand. And because that's, that is her brand. It's a personal brand. She's a Gaynetta broker, New Jersey broker. So um, I would say absolutely um, post, post a few times a day. Cool guys. It's 12 o'clock. I know I have another meeting um, right after this. I want to be conscious of everybody's time as well. Thank you all so much for coming and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. You as well. Happy Turkey day. That's right.